Hey you guys, I'm Brian Paul, and it's time for some more PlayStation VR breaking news. A new sale started yesterday on the PlayStation Store called Games Under $15. Now, this sale ends on May 26th, so get the ones you want before then. But also keep in mind that Sony has already announced another sale that'll kick off later this month for their annual Days of Play celebration. And when we know what games are included in that sale, well, we'll let you know. But in the meantime, here's every game that's on sale right now. When we talk about AAA VR games, Blood and Truth is always the one that gets mentioned first. It has amazing production values, great gunplay, unskippable, non-interactive cutscenes, tons of free DLC, some of which even support the aim controller, and plenty of collectibles to find. Clocking in at around 5 hours, it's a little on the short side, but Blood and Truth is an unforgettable experience. It always pains me to talk about Bravo Team. Knowing it has node-to-node -node teleportation is fine. I mean, Bravo Team still could have been a cool Time Crisis-inspired shooter. But when every enemy is exactly the same, environments are barren, there's no bosses, power-ups, vehicles, or over-the-top action sequences to speak of, this has no connection to Time Crisis at all. Instead, it went for realism, and ended up being boring. Contagion VR isn't technically on sale, but it did get a permanent price cut down to $15. But even at that price, recommending it might be a little difficult. It looks and feels really janky compared to other zombie shooters, and although the addition of a fourth level added a ton of value to Contagion, I'd have to say just wait for Arizona Sunshine to go on sale again. When Everybody's Golf VR launched, it was criticized for not having a multiplayer mode. And while this is still a totally valid complaint, the $10 price point makes it really easy to overlook. The three courses here are beautiful, the move controls feel absolutely perfect, and other than the fact that there's no option to turn off the caddy's voiceovers, Everybody's Golf VR is the perfect way to spend an afternoon. Farpoint is one of those games that PSVR 1 will be remembered for. The campaign told a great story, it looks, sounds, and feels great with the aim controllers, later patches allowed you to level up your weapons, and free DLC brought us bonus co-op missions and 1v1 deathmatches. For $10, you need this in your collection. Rhythm games are great, especially in VR, but Hatsune Miku VR doesn't feel like a rhythm game. In fact, it can often feel totally random. But even if you somehow enjoy the gameplay here, there's still only a handful of songs, requiring you to buy multiple DLC packs to get the full experience. As a contender for one of the worst PSVR games ever made, Heavy Fire Red Shadow shockingly seems halfway decent at first. You sit stationary at a rotating turret-mounted machine gun, and essentially, you have to shoot non-stop at oncoming enemies. But every level is exactly the same, and each one goes on for what feels like forever. And to make it worse, you'll be bored five minutes in. Home Sweet Home is one of my favorite PSVR horror games. There's a lot of wandering around, wondering what to do next, but the game simply oozes atmosphere. The stealth sections are nerve-wracking, the tension is always high, and the story isn't bad either. There's one giant game-breaking crash that happens near the end of the game, which actually requires you to play in non-VR for about 10 minutes or so to get through it. But amazingly, I'm willing to overlook that because the rest of the game is so good. The last time Hustle Kings went on sale, I, I gave it a pretty strong recommendation, and today, I'd like to correct that mistake. Despite some nice music and environments, Hustle Kings has horrible controls, making it no fun to play. It's a real shame, this one could have been great. If I was making a personal top 10 list, Immortal Legacy would definitely find a place on it. The story is ridiculous and all over the place. The tone goes from Uncharted to Resident Evil within the first hour or two, and with the exception of my character's arms being too short, one particularly annoying boss fight, and some awkward controls, I loved Immortal Legacy enough to have finished it four times now. Island Time VR is a great idea for a game. I just wish the execution had been a little bit better thought out. You're stranded on an island and you have to constantly hunt and cook to survive, but there's no locomotion, collision detection isn't always reliable, and after an hour or so, you've probably played all the Island Time VR you're going to want to play. Don't get me wrong, it's fun, but the tedium drags it down. Lethal VR is a fun little shooting gallery that you can blast through in about an hour. But if you're the kind of gamer who wants to play in replay levels to beat your own high scores, you can do a whole lot worse than Lethal VR at $4. Manifest 99 is less of a game and more of an interactive story. The artwork and storytelling here are phenomenal, but clocking in at just 20 minutes, it's over before you know it. With catch and release being as good as it is, it's hard to recommend Monster of the Deep even for the hardcore Final Fantasy crowd. It's painfully blurry on the OG PS4. Most of the character interactions are awkward, boss battles are way too scripted, and the fishing here isn't all that great. 
That said, I still spent over 20 hours with this one trying to unlock everything, so there's a decent amount of content here. As a huge fan of the One Piece anime, I was excited to get into Grand Cruise, but from the very beginning, it feels like a cheap cash grab. There's just not a lot to do here, and what there is to do is pretty boring. Why couldn't we have gotten Unlimited World Red in VR? I mean, it's a full-fledged PS3 game that actually does the license justice. Surely it could run on PSVR. As much as I love Persona 3 and rhythm games, Persona 3 Dancing in the Moonlight isn't a VR game. There's a VR dressing room mode, but aren't we sick of these tacked on VR modes yet? It's a fun game, just don't buy it for the VR implementation. Tim Schafer is a genius, but if you're not convinced, you should check out his writing in Rhombus of Ruin. It's a great Psychonaut side story, which is exclusive to VR, that'll certainly remind you of old point-and-click LucasArts adventure games. It's only a couple hours long, but games with creativity like this don't come around often. In a world where we're inundated with VR wave shooters, somehow the original VR wave shooter still stands out as one of the best. It's not terribly complicated, so you'll be blasting enemies and dodging and blocking incoming attacks like a pro within minutes. Pick this one up, it's really addictive. I used to defend Space Rift as a decent VR space flight adventure, but the last time I gave it a chance, I found it to be really boring, oversaturated with poor voiceovers, and not nearly as much fun as I remember it being. There are some original ideas here that push exploration just as much as combat, but overall, it simply hasn't aged well. If you've already played Home Sweet Home, Paranormal Activity, Don't Knock Twice, Resident Evil 7, The Exorcist, Legion VR, A Chair in Room, Greenwater, and The Persistence, and really, really need another horror game, Stifled isn't a bad option. It hangs out pretty low on the recommended VR horror list, mostly because the echolocation mechanic and wireframe graphics get old after a while. But for $6, it's a fun little adventure. I think if someone made an actual VR kite flying game where you could build your own kite, then bring it outside and get it to fly, keep it in the air going higher and higher, that could be kind of fun. Unfortunately, Stunt Kite Masters isn't that at all. It's really basic and feels like it plays against a 2D plane up in the sky. $2 is the right price for this game. I just don't know who'd want to play it. The American Dream takes the United States lax gun control laws as the basis for its satirical humor, which I would think would play favorably to advocates of stricter gun control. Unfortunately though, the humor just isn't all that funny, and although I like the different environments the game brings you through, there's just way too much downtime. For a game about guns, there should have been way more shooting. Track Lab is a puzzle game that desperately wants to be music creation software, but the puzzles aren't fun, and creating music with these tools isn't fun either. I don't know what to say. Just get Electronauts instead. It sucks to admit, but for the number of times I've tried to get into Rick and Morty, it's never really grabbed me. So I didn't expect to like Trover Saves the Universe, developed by Squanch Games, which was founded by Rick and Morty co-creator Justin Roilands, at all. But this platformer had me laughing pretty much non-stop from beginning to end, with its ridiculous, sometimes dark, sometimes juvenile humor. Plus the platforming, exploration, progression system, and art style are all top-notch. You gotta play this one, especially for the price. Tumble VR acts like a glorified version of Jenga. A lot of the levels ask you to build a tower with pieces that don't really go together, making the whole thing a stressful balancing act. For $5 it's fun, but there is a free demo if you want to see what you're in for. The Wipeout Omega Collection is this weird anomaly that shouldn't exist on PSVR at all, for so many reasons. Firstly, for the $10 sale price, you get three complete Wipeout games, each with its own campaign, tracks, and bonuses, not to mention the option for online 8-player racing. Plus, the VR patch, which was delivered for free, managed to keep the stunningly detailed, beautiful graphics intact. So pick this one up, turn off all the comfort settings if you've got the stomach for it, and enjoy some roller coaster racing, because that's exactly what this feels like in first-person VR. All right, you guys, it's all the breaking news I have for you today. But make sure you subscribe to the channel so you can stay up to date with all the latest PlayStation VR reviews, Let's Plays, podcasts, and of course, breaking news. As always, I'm Brian Paul, and I love you all.